What's your I told you so moment? Since I was 14, my throat got itchy when I ate apples. I told my mom but she thought I just didn't want to eat apples and forced me to eat them. Went to the doctor's office and got a test for allergies. Turns out I am allergic to apples, peaches, and many other fruits. I have one like that. My mom was going to school to be a nurse at this time. I used to go on these long hikes in the mountains behind my house in Southern California. There is lots of poison oak. I had I had it pretty frequently. Our dog would even give it to me on her fur. I started getting these white bumps that popped up on my skin that itched. My mom gave me calamine lotion and tea tree oil, but it wasn't working. I told her, I've had poison oak. This isn't poison oak. But she didn't believe me. This went on for six months until she took me to a doctor. First doctor looks at it and doesn't know. Second and third don't know what it is. The fourth takes one look at it. Says that scabies. Use this lotion and take these pills. Two days later it was gone. Six months of that though. My newborn baby was projectile vomiting after every feeding. I took her to the doctor several times. Always ended up being sent away with suggestions to try a different formula. I tried like four different ones. No change. The fourth or fifth visit, they sent me away again with the same recommendation even though I pleaded with them to figure out what was wrong with my baby. I left the office and drove to the ER instead. She ended up having emergency surgery that day. The surgeon said she would have starved to death or maybe dehydrated. Had she gone much longer without the surgery. I gave the doctors in that office a piece of my mind. Working in a horse breeding barn told a new employee that she might want to wear gloves when cleaning horse sheets. She said it wasn't necessary. Next day, she's complaining that even 10 washes wouldn't get the stench off her hands. The mares liked her, though. My sister and I were out sledding when we were kids at this place with a really steep hill. I had unknowingly gone down a sled path that had a jump in it, and when I landed it really hurt my back. So when I got back up to the top of the hill I told my sister don't go that way. The jump really hurts. She called me a baby and didn't believe me that it really hurt so she decided she would go down that path on her sled. Well, she hit the jump and didn't get back up. Turns out she fell so hard she had broken her leg. When we finally got her back up the hill into the car, I got to tell her I told Told you so. Lawyer here fired a partner who I found some real irregularities in their spending habits versus what they were making after he couldn't provide a good answer to where it came from. Other partner left and started a new firm with them because they disagreed with my decision and refused to look at the evidence. Turns out he stole 500k of a client's money, got disbarred, and is now facing prison time. I told her to look at the evidence and she didn't listen. I work at a US Navy shipyard. My worst I told you so moment was when a submarine had multiple issues with sanitation collection tanks and the piping that led from the showers and toilets to the sanitation collection tanks documented and pointed out the same problems over a 12-week period. Supervisors and the tank area manager didn't give a damn and pointedly ignored my reports. Undocking day was approaching and the captain of the sub wanted the boat out on time, so they moved up the tank closure schedule. So tank closing protocol requires several Take not one from a qualified civilian inspector, one from a qualified Navy hull technician sealer, and one from a qualified Navy engineering officer. That tank in question failed all three concurrent inspections. Undocking got pushed back by 30 days until all problems found were corrected. Daily operations estimated costs were north of 10,000 day. Factor in the mandatory overtime and rework required and we were looking at maybe triple the daily cost. This is just people's pay. I didn't get to see the material cost overrun but I know for a fact that a lot of the materials got shipped in or fabricated in-house overnight. Needless to say, a lot of people on general schedule pay got chewed out by the then shipyard company in private. My best friend started dating my ex-wife 10 years after the divorce and he checked if they take issue even though he did and he need to anyway when we divorced it was because she was cheating on me while I was in Afghanistan. He goes out of state for work and told me she started acting off not answering calls quick to hang up starting fights when has home or going to parties rather than spend time with him. I pointed out this is what she did to me almost exactly and stated that if he confronts her on her shit she will probably without provocation accuse him of cheating and more to the point most likely be because she's actively cheating q 30 minute monologue of how she's grown up and she's not that person now she's just used to not having to answer to others or having a real relationship in year three hour later he calls because he went to pick up some weed and there she's blowing the cellar 
was picking beans with my sister and mom. To this day I still don't know why the fence was electric but it was. I touched it and I got zapped. It wasn't too bad but it hurt. I jumped away and my sister saw me. I said that it was an electric fence. Of course she just thought I was pranking her. I was trying to tell her the whole time we picked beans but she didn't believe me. Right at the end she touched the fence and she didn't see it coming at all. Her face was just like, oh she left the car ride home. I told you, idiot. In high school I was at a party where everyone was getting drunk. I had come with two friends and near the end of the night this one guy there was losing everyone into his van to get late night food. He swore he was not drunk and there were so many people in his car, including the two people I came with. It was not a battle I was going to win, but it seemed like an obviously dumb situation. Bunch of underage kids packed into a van driving around in the suburbs at 1.00 in the morning. I told my friends that this wasn't a good idea and they need to get out of the van and come back on with me. My house was within walking distance. They acted like I was a party pooper for a second but then they got out. Next day I find out the guy driving ram a red light and go to burn by a truck. The one kid in the back almost died and everyone got banged up. The friends I pulled out of the van were in the back seat along with him. Not saying I saved their lives but I really may have saved their lives. My partner and I were broken struggling to make ends meet but we always kept money in the budget for fun or takeout nights. One night we decided to get fish and chips. My partner had never ordered from that particular place before but it was my favorite so he knew it'd be good. We don't have a lot of money to spare so I know we had to order smart. We'll only order what we need. We start driving and I am about to call and my partner tells me he wants to order 10 worth of chips. For those of you who don't know how much that is, a scoop of chips is usually about 2-3. I tried to tell him that it was a ridiculous order and that this particular fish and chip shop was very generous with their portions, which is why it was one of my favorites. He was adamant about 10 chips and that he was so hungry that it's not like any would be wasted. We had a mini argument in the car and I finally gave up and said, fine, order your chips but you had better eat them all. We get to the fish and chip shop and we go to the counter to pay and the old fellow who runs the shop comes over to serve us. We tell him what order we're here to collect. That order is yours. He goes, I start to shake my head and smile. Yes, my partner replies, and it's just for you too, the old man asks, looking concerned. Ah, yes, at this point I start laughing. I try to tell him. We both laugh and my partner realizes his mistake when the old guy pulls out two huge parcels of chips. One of those alone would have fed a full family. We all laughed our little hearts out, thanked the man, and went home to eat our fish and chips. And no, he didn't eat them all. We didn't even get through the first parcel. Now whenever we need the other person to trust our judgment on something. We say, 10 chips, and the other person will always blend. It still cracks me up every time I think about his face when the old man gave us our order. Always listen when your server goes, are you sure? This reminds me of a malicious compliance I read the other day where a dude ended up ordering a coffee that was all cream and sugar and was like did I stutter. Dude came back later to apologize though, so he learned his lesson. I have a malicious compliance story from when I worked in a coffee shop. There was this woman who ordered a large specialty drink so like 7 because her shop was expensive and it was a huge decadent drink. As she was walking away after she paid, she popped back and said, oh and make it extra hot at that coffee shop. We did things different than Starbucks. We steamed our milk to 135F 140F because when you get much hotter, you start to scald the milk and it gets bitter and burnt tasting. For reference, Starbucks typically makes their drinks at at least 165F. Our extra hot drink temp is about 160F. So I make her drink to our extra hot temp and call it out. She grabs it then sits down only for a minute before barking in front of a very long line to yell that her drink was not extra hot. I explain to her about how we do it in the temps and apologize if there was any confusion because there was such a long thing of people she was holding up. My manager stepped in and offered to microwave her drink because it would be much faster. This lady was not having any of it and was turning red while spitting. I paid seven ducking dollars for this drink. I wanted extra hot. She slammed the cup down and hopped away. My manager looked at me and said, you heard her. So I get a new cup with all the flavors and espresso ready and grab the milk and the thermometer. I watched as the temp went to 130, then 140. 
then 150, then 160, upwards to 190 until it was spattering and steaming and I was burning my hand a little bit. I poured this scalding mess and called out her order again. She came up and I served her that boiling mess with a sickly sweet grin and said, extra hot, enjoy. My manager and I watched as she trotted and made a face like she instantly regretted all of her life choices. She didn't recoil like she burned herself, but she definitely made a stink face. I would have too. Honestly it was probably awful because the milk definitely was burned to shit. But all was well because she did not come back up again. I once owned a dog who was very stubborn and independent. She lived a feral life in the mountains as a young pup and I feel like that played a role. She felt more like a roommate than a pet. She was having heart trouble when she got older so she had to get a chest scan at the vet. These two men came out to get her. So I gave them a heads up that she would absolutely dislike being flipped on her back and out there for the scan flipping a dog on its back is putting it in a pretty submissive position. One of the guys interrupted me and basically said they were professionals and I had to just let them work. They snapped a muzzle on her and took her to the back. A few seconds pass, then I hear a crash and a few yells. One of the guys who took her comes out and sheepishly asks for my help. It turns out as soon as they flipped her on her back she kicked out of their arms, unclipped her muzzle, removed it with her front paws, then made a mad dash for freedom. I caught her roaming around the back of the vet's office and she was perfectly well behaved while I held her for the scan. I felt bad for two guys she escaped from, but I had tried to warn them. Ancient one was a pit bull mutt who leaped over fences. We took him to be boarded. They had two fences in the free play area. The second fences was a high security fence and there was zero chance he could escape. We warned them that the first fence wouldn't stop them. They laughed. They explained how much planning went into this design. They said it's been a decade and you don't need to worry. I told them to get ready to chase him down when he jumps the first fence. We pick him up a few days later. They told us he jumped the fence the first time he was in that yard. They said it was the first dog they had ever seen fly. Ancient one had the best hour ever playing keep away from the humans. I would have loved to have seen it on video. Someone started talking about a bottle of Newman's own salad dressing while at dinner with my family and I said something like I'm pretty sure that was started by the actor race car driver Paul Newman, to which one of my siblings replied no it was someone else. I grabbed the bottle and turned it around and started reading the label out loud. The first sentence was Paul Newman's career was acting, but his passion was auto racing. I stopped reading after that. I've talked about this cheating scandal at my high school before. Something I never mentioned was my friend was about to ask for the answers to a test that he really needed. Told him not to do it. Wasn't worth and all. Thankfully, he didn't do it. When the whole scandal came out, three kids got expelled, eight suspended. I know a dozen more were caught but I don't know what happened to them. My friend's teacher ended up giving him and a few other kids an A just for being honest. Apparently, he was one of the few kids in that class that didn't cheat. Reading this makes me realize I may have been writing a fine line in HS chemistry. This was back in the 07-08 school year. The school got a new chemistry teacher that year after the very well-liked good chemistry teacher retired. The new teacher wasn't very good at teaching. Moreover read the book, do all the assignments, and figure it out type. She wasn't big on helping students with questions they had for whatever reason. Needless to say students were frustrated. I had the brilliant idea to make a Facebook account separate from my personal account and made a group or something along those lines that people could join. Basically anyone could post homework answers, assignments, etc. to the group. So we have this big cheating ring going on for 2-3 of the year. Expulsion for creating a big cheating group never even crossed my brilliant high school brain. This is more of what I told myself so that anyway, when I applied to medical school, one of the application essays had a prompt that asked us what we would do if we did not get into medical school. I thought I would take a risk since it was a read school and I wanted to stand out. I kept thinking it wasn't worth it and that I should just write a normal essay, but for some reason just went with the riskier option. I wrote that I would go to law school and become a lawyer specializing in prosecuting medical malpractice. I ended up getting an interview and had a good laugh about it with one of the interviewers did not get into that medical school. I was a fresh faced sysadmin APFY viewer who had just been handed my first big project. I took it over after it was already in progress due to the late admin having a medical emergency. It was a critical environment and the key component was a two node database cluster. I was in way over my head but I had support from a few project members and so I was making my way through it. At one point I was reviewing the connectivity to the servers. The idea for a critical piece of infrastructure is to reduce single points of failure as POF. As I was going 
going through the documentation I noticed both database servers had all of their network connections run to the same switch. So I brought it up to the network guy on the team a senior engineer. He said not to worry about it and brushed me off. So I brought it up on the next project call. I said if we're trying to keep this thing up and running according to the SLA we really need to eliminate this issue and put half the connections for both systems to another switch. Senior network guy said I was wrong switches are very reliable and rarely fail. Like I said, this was my first project so I relented. The systems went live into production use the next week. Literally within 5 days of the systems being live and customer facing, the duck and switch dies. Both nodes of the cluster go offline. The database is down. The app is down. Huge cost to the business unit customer. The outage review call was pretty fun as the admin I was asked why the systems were connected to the same switch. I said I had called that out as a risk and the network guy said it was no problem and I was overruled. It was awesome when the call leader asked the network guy if he still felt that way. Helping a former friend do some renovations in a house he had just purchased. I had better than half a clue what I was doing. And my other friend who was with us definitely knew what she was doing. But the guy who owned the house hardly knew which end of the hammer to grip. We get down to the foundation walls and there is an almost brand new 4x4 post running from floor to ceiling that he thought was ugly. I tried to explain to him that it was clearly load bearing. And my friend chimed in that it was obviously there for a reason. But his reply was something to the effect of girls being hysterical and mocking us for thinking the ceiling was going to fall down. I literally backed away from the situation and when he took a all to the beam and knocked it loose I watched the ceiling drop. He still thought I was overreacting until we got upstairs and saw the three gap between the floor and baseboards along the front wall of the house. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more videos.